of Sister. I am the overseer of C. Hunt, the pastor and founder of King and King's Baptist Ministries here in the Bronco Center of the City. And it gives me a great opportunity and pleasure to invite you to one of our mission services this morning that you might experience God like you've never experienced it before. And I am Elder Ellen Clark, the First Lady of King and King's Baptist Ministries. Here you will find out that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. For we believe in worshiping God in spirit and in truth. I pray that as you do this video, that you will be able to experience God as if you've never experienced it before. So come on, go with me into one of our worship services and see what God has in store for you. Let us go now.
Praise God. Yeah. I know you have been praying for my husband. Uh, yeah. He had cancer. Yeah. Lymphoma. When we took him in, he was bleeding from his stomach. They had given him three pints of blood. We started chemo in September. The doctor said that he had tumor on his lung, tumor on his rib, tumors in his stomach, tumor on his spine. And the doctors had said 30% chance of recovery. Go home and get your affairs in order. But I said, God has the last say. Well, God spoke right. Hallelujah. The doctor came in and he had his little folder there with him. He looked at it. He put it down. Closed it up. Didn't say anything. And he looked up at it again, my husband. My husband said, oh, what's it say? So, I have to go out and talk to the nurse first. He got out the room and he came back. He opened the folder up again. And he looked at it. And he said, there's not a tumor anywhere.
interview when we went back. Your name kept coming back to the top.
anybody says, I don't care what anybody does, I love the Lord. And I'm here to say right now, if you're obedient, even when you don't want to be, if you're obedient and do what God has asked you to do, even when times get hard, if you just don't want to do it no more, keep doing it. Because God will bless you. Yes, will. God has blessed me. Yes, he will. Oh. He has blessed me. I know you. And I have given you $1,000 for our building time. Thank you. Yes. Thank
we do our own. Uh,
You got an apartment, you found out there was a gas bill, light bill, cable bill, rent. Amen. You found out there was a lot more to it. Things that you took for granted were now issues in your life that you had to address. So you lost your vision. Oh, it's easy to lose vision. That's where you think you wanted to go, what you thought you might have wanted to do. But with God, really, it's never too late. Many of us have just got to the point that now our vision is dim. It doesn't look as bright. Not as young as I used to be. Don't have the zeal, the fight that I used to have. I don't have the strength anymore. You know, I'm kind of tired now. Wore out. But I came to find in reading the Bible that I saw where God did not just use the young or the middle age. He also used old age people. It was a man and a woman that was barren. They didn't have any kids in their old age. Uh, I believe that Moses was in his older age when God decided he could use him. With your age and losing vision, there should come some maturity. There should come some things that you should have learned along the way by going through what you went through. Many people go through life situations and life issues and don't learn anything. Doomed to repeat it over and over again. Did not learn that the bad boys are not the answer. They're going to be bad boys, always what bad boys, they're going to stay bad boys. You ain't going to change them just because you decide to change them. We need to learn and realize that we need to learn by our experiences in life to help make us better. There were people that learned by experience and they learned how to make it better. They used to cross America in a covered buggy and wagon or on horseback. Now you got jets, you got buses, trains. A little bit more comfortable, they learn by their experience that I can make travel much easier. I'm here to tell you today, you're going to go through some things, but it can be much easier if you would just learn to improve upon your present conditions. Mm, everybody issues are always going to be there, they're not going anywhere. Uh, every sin sin was committed in the garden, it didn't happen. Book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, look at this, look what it says. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Why do God's servants fail? Why, why do we not accomplish or achieve what God has given us vision for? Do you that are in leadership today in King of Kings, I gotta talk to King of Kings, I don't talk to nobody else. I gotta talk to you. But if you're in leadership in this church, what vision has God given you? I do not believe that God calls you into leadership without vision. There's a vision. I had a vision when God called me to preach the gospel. I had a vision and I saw the vision and then I had to pursue the vision. I saw it. It wasn't there yet, but I believed it was going to take place. Amen. At a point now where I still have vision, even though I'm sitting here now where I thought myself being, there's still vision in front of this, and I see more. But I got to pursue the vision. Many of you have vision, but you're not pursuing the vision because your vision has dimmed. There's various reasons why your vision dims. Think about it. Like I said earlier, children, family, job, loved ones. I would love to put the time in the church, Pastor, but you know, my job is in the way. I would really love to put the time in and do this and do that, but my family is in the way. That there's a million excuses or reasons why we cannot accomplish the vision because our vision has dimmed. Because anytime there's someone or something between you and your vision, you can't see it. If I'm standing here 
in and I'm looking out on the congregation and someone drops a cloth in front of me, I can't see you. That means my vision now has been hampered, it has been tempered, I can't see what's going on. But if I can remove the veil, I can envision everything that is in the room and everyone that is in the room. So now I need to understand why is it that I call myself a servant of God, whether leadership or lay person, you are still a servant of God. And you might be saying as a lay person, well, wait a minute, what should my vision be? I don't know. What are you talking about? You should at least have the common vision that every Christian has from the pulpit. Well, I can't say from the pulpit, but I will say from the pews to the pews. Because the thing about it is, sheep begets sheep. Yeah. Dumb shepherd don't do that. So your vision should be at least somebody. I need to be getting and touching somebody in my life. Because the Bible said that I should reiterate and redevelop myself or recreate myself. Because sheep recreate sheep, apples recreate apples. Chickens recreate chickens. Trees recreate chicken trees. So if I'm a Christian, I need to recreate or rebirth something out of me. Someone needs to come to Christ through me. Because I'm a sheep, and I'm supposed to be fruitful and multiply. Anything that is alive and is fruitful multiplies. Yeah. If you think I'm wrong, you still find it stink bugs, ain't you? Yeah. Yeah. They replenish themselves. They were fruitful and they multiplied. No matter how much you try to get rid of. Comes a stink bug. I thought they all was dead. Find another one, lay on his back, feet up in the air. Cold as it was. Still here. They were talking about the cold we're going to get rid of. But they're still here. Because they're reproducing themselves. So why am I failing? Why do we often lack the power? that God promised us a long time ago. He said it in his word. He said that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So if I'm feeling weak, if I'm feeling inadequate, if I'm feeling like I'm incapable, why is it that I'm not having the power? Because apparently I have not embraced the Holy Ghost. Because he said you shall receive. That then means that you might receive or it may take place. It says shall. Shall means will. Shall means it's going to happen. It says after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. But many of us have been praying the wrong prayers. We're going after the wrong things. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you, but our problem is our vision that God has given us is good, but we're sitting back only waiting for God to fulfill the vision. We don't want to do our part. We don't want to put in the work. We don't want to put in the labor or the effort because we're too busy praying the wrong prayers. The Bible says what better gift can a man give than he lay down his life for his fellow man? Amen. No, Pastor, I, I gotta get that car, I, I gotta get that house, I gotta get that husband. No, 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 no. I need all this stuff in my life and I can support the church. No, seek ye first the kingdom of God and I'll act. Then I'll act. No, you're too busy trying to take care of you rather than doing what God has called you to do. Why you fail? Because you've been praying not for more power in your ministry, more ability to draw in your ministry. You have been praying for the stuff that you want. Oh, you ain't gonna take my word for it. Go back and think about the prayer you prayed last night. Go back and think about the prayer night before. You got stuff going on in your life that you really don't have to deal with. Am I right?
Okay? You're not catching it. Here we are, and the question comes out, and we need to understand that our primary focus as human beings is self-preservation. We're self-preservative because Satan knew this from the very beginning. He comes to Eve and he says, you'll be wise as God. Look at that tree. It's good for you. Even though God says don't touch it, this is what you need. I know the pastor said you need to seek the kingdom first. And I know the pastor telling you that you need to forsake your net and follow Christ. But child, you gotta leave. Child, you know that you know the church ain't gonna pay your bills. You know good and well that you're, they're not gonna take care of you. I'm not telling you to forsake stuff that needs to be done, but I'm asking you to realize that you need to ask God to help you to be in position to fulfill your mission. Many of us have just settled for working on Sundays. Step 
out of that stuff and then step over here and then I'll give you some stuff that man can't take away. This is why many of us are walking on eggshells with our jobs right now, scared half to death, because God didn't give it to you no how. You're afraid to breathe, you're afraid to move. But when God has given you something, you can walk in authority. They can't get rid of you if they wanted to. Oh, I'm just trying to help somebody. This is why we lack power. We lack the ability. We're weak. And the world sees that we're weak. Because we don't even have faith in what we believe in. Oh, uh, that scripture said, let the mind be in you. That is it. There was nothing that Jesus did not believe he could do. There was nothing that Jesus believed in his mind that could not be done because he was God. And he said, I want you to have that same mind in you. Why? Because I am your Savior. And if I'm with you, he said, who? Who can stand against you? One thing about vision, it should be larger than what you're capable of accomplishing. Many of you have dim vision because you are looking at your abilities and your capabilities. And the world has told you, well, you know, you got to have this and you got to have that or you can't get this and you can't get that. Well, how is it that I'm serving a God that has all power? How is it that I'm serving a God that's able to do everything and anything? He can even change the minds of the enemy. He will make them bless you even when they don't want to bless you. He will have people doing for you. And they don't even understand why they're doing it. They just decide, I'm just going to do this for you. We need to believe in God and believe that God is able. We need to have that mindset that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I'm not worried about what man says or what he does. This is how we get to the great amazement. People ought to be amazed at what you are able to accomplish and try to figure out how you did it. What amazed people will be able to look at you and try to figure out, I know they don't have the education. I know I'm talking to 
the church. I'm talking to the saints. And many of you are talking about defeated. You're talking about you can't get away. And, and things are not improving in your life. And we're not going anywhere in my personal life. And I'm not able to accomplish this. And I can't do that. I, I've been trying to get the choir to grow. But it won't grow. I've been trying to get the usher board to grow. It won't grow. I've been trying to get the deacon board to grow. It won't grow. I, I don't know what it is. But I, I'm thankful. But for some reason, things are not happening. Yeah. 
is trying to help somebody here. You need to understand, Jesus said, if you only believe. Yeah. That's what all I ask you to do. To just believe yeah, yeah. that I'm able. Believe that I've got power. And look at you. It says, and straightway, Straight. the Father cried out. Uh -huh. Look, I'm trying to get you to a point that you got to do it right now, straightway. I believe that I can make it. I believe that I can fly. Oh, I can believe that I can touch the sky. You got to believe that you can accomplish whatever God has shown you. Yeah. You got to believe it in your heart and in your mind that if God be for me, who can stand against me? You got to believe that God will increase your board. You got to believe that he will increase the choir. You got to believe that he will increase the congregation. You got to believe right now. And here I find out that the man said, I hear what you said.
I believe. Stop looking at the circumstances. Stop looking at the little stuff. And start picturing big stuff. Start picturing great stuff. Start picturing things that are larger. That you even think you're capable of handling. We are often stifled by our own mind. Amen. You don't see yourself riding in a new car. You don't see yourself living in a new home. You don't see yourself being at the head. That's why many of you have never gotten there. Because you can't see it because somebody else has told you it's impossible. Or that it can't be done. I remember moving here in this building and I asked God, I'm not questioning. I said, why in the world would you put me in the middle of a neighborhood that has some of the largest churches in the city? Right in the middle of this neighborhood. But I hear the voice of God saying, I'm able, I'm able, trust in me. Show the vision. Now we gotta. 
is also in Jesus. In Jesus' mind, there was no impossible. In Jesus' mind, all things could be done. So we need that same mindset. We're walking in defeatedness because of our own mind. We got to start thinking things that were not as if they are. That's what the Bible says. You stop looking at your little bitty numbers or whatever you got and saying, I can't, no, no. I see it bigger. I see that bank account bigger than it was last year. Uh, I see that bank account. I see it bigger than it was last year. Man, I, I see that car better than it was last year. God did not say I had to look at poverty. God did not get some new furniture this year. your first thought to be about the ministry of God. Then take it to the personal level. This is what God is saying. You, you, you got to push his kingdom first. And then God said, then I'm going to add the other stuff. I know, I know what you need. I know what you want. Don't you worry about that. I'll provide that. But I need you to push the kingdom. I need you to push the kingdom. Right? You start to get sheep. You start compelling men and women to come to the house of God. Stop being kind to folk. I need a new way of thinking. 
that we would ever walk into your life. Because it took the blood of an innocent man to die to atone for man's sin and honor. We cannot bless it, but we can ask God blessing upon it and upon you. Examine yourself right now. Anything that is not righteous, ask God to help you to overcome it at this moment. Father God, help me to overcome it right now that I do not discern the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those of you that are not members, that have not joined the church or do not belong to the church, you need to make that commitment to Christ. You just need to get under the ark of safety in this day in which we live. Because you're going to get all the protection you can get. Because the world is going to run around it. Father God, bless us right now. Crown of our hands to the soles of our feet. That as we partake of the bread and the body that was broken, and the blood that we set, the redemption story and salvation, we thank you in advance and glorify you. We do this in remembrance of you. And Father God, when our lives down here are over, we will have a rest of peace. We believe in you. And they say that on that day, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat together. The purple of our faint trees will release the wine. Maybe on that path. And they said, likewise, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He said, this is my blood, which is shed for the very remission of sin. He said, I shall not drink it again with thee until I drink it again with my father's kingdom. Yeah. Let us now come here together.